What's going on guys? Bringing you another video from up here at Grafton Archery. I'm pumped about this one. I hope you guys are too. Without further ado, today's video, the brand new Matthews Lift 33. All right guys, so I'm sure if any of you guys are uh, big into archery or big into Matthews, I'm sure you've probably seen the leaked photo or heard about the leaked photo uh, about the new Matthews. Well, I'm here to say the new reviews are out. I have shot these bows and honestly, this year's Matthews is by far my favorite offerings from Matthews in a long, long time. This is the first year, first rendering or first offerings from Matthews that has made me just go, wow. As soon as I grab these bows, one, the first thing you'll notice is how light these bows are. Matthews is normally not known for being a light bow. This bow here is like 4.25 pounds, 4.26 pounds, 33 inches axle to axle. And the riser on this bow makes the riser on my Hoyt RX-7 Ultra look tiny. If you watch my, 29 and a half, my lift 29 and a half video, you'll notice that I said the riser on the 29 and a half was slightly longer than the riser on my RX-7 Ultra. Well, this riser is another essentially three inches on top of that. So they've, Matthews in general has just been the innovator in riser straightness and length. You can see how straight this riser is just so straight. There's very little recess in the, in the riser itself. And they've done every little bit on this thing to drop weight that they possibly can. And somehow they've been able to keep the balance and lack of hand shock and just silence in the shot. So let's talk about some specs on this bow. Axle to axle, 33 inches, essentially the same as last couple years. Brace height, six and a half inches. Bow weight, this is where this thing just pulls away from the last couple of years bows, 4.26 pounds, guys. That's with bare bow, nothing on it. it this, the way this bow is set up is with a QAD Ultra Rest. Um, it also has the SCS system on it. It has this quiver brackets already on it, and it's got the vibration dampener in it, which all that adds to the regular Matthews weight, which they weigh these bows with nothing on it. Uh, even the little vibration dampener is out of it when they weigh them. So draw weights on these bows. They're going to be available with the mods, the switchable mods at 55, 65, 70, 75, and 80 with speeds up to 343. We'll get on speeds here in a minute because I was pretty intrigued by the speeds that I got out of this bow. Draw length availability, 26, 31 and a half. Uh, so any of you longer draw guys, this is gonna be a pretty good option for you. Switchweight X is the name of the cam this year. And as you'll notice with these cams, they are completely redesigned. They have a similar shape to the last several years, um, but they're definitely way different. When you look at the way this bow is designed, this is a completely new bow. It's not like they built on an older system. Let off 80 to 85%, but I can say this bow doesn't seem to have the valley as, as good of a valley as the last couple of years bows, which I like. It, it aids me in being able to let my bow down and I'm shooting 80% anyway. So on the, in the past, the bows that I've shot, I've already had to change my mod to 80%. This bow doesn't feel like it has quite as much let off. I don't, they're saying 85%, but it doesn't feel like it to me. Uh, the colors is going to be 12 options for colors this year. And if you remember the old quest or prime bows, they had that like camo to black color scheme on them. Well, these have what they call fade to black, um, as an option. And it's going to be like a, say a tan or a green top and it starts fading to black and it's going to have bottom limbs. I don't care for it, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that really like that design. So some new technology, like I said, the Switchway X cams, 
Then you'll notice on this bow, there's what they're calling their top axles. And it's brackets that are bolted to the top of the limbs. One thing you'll notice on these limbs is they are so thin, it's not even funny. Like when you compare these to another bow, it's ridiculous how thin these limbs are and it's almost scary how thin they are and how much they flex as I draw the bow back. With that being said, these, the way these limbs are designed and the axles on top of the system is supposed to aid with the amount of usable limb. Uh, and they're supposed to flex more, which gives you the speed. Um, there are several reasons why they went to this system. It is different looking though, when you're used to seeing the axle going through the limb. I think this is also gonna make it easier when it, go, when it comes to tuning the bow as far as getting the axles in and out. But I haven't done it yet, so I can't speak 100% to that. Uh, anyway, the RPD limbs, this is their redesigned RPD limbs. What Matthews is saying, more efficient, less vibration, more speed. This bow is compatible. I believe this is a new grip. I'm not 100%, but in my hand, it feels different. It feels flatter on the back end. I still don't know that I care for the grip that much. If I did shoot this bow, I would probably change that, but I can't speak to that 100% as well because I haven't shot it at distance. Uh, but this has what they call shot sense capability. They have a, a little thing that's come, like goes in your grip that allows you to, or I don't know if it goes in your grip or it's just what it is exactly, but somehow this system uh, it integrates directly into your grip. I've not seen one in person, so I can't really speak to it, but it attaches to your phone and it gives you feedback on your shot angles and stuff like that. So that's something cool. If you're interested in that, it's probably gonna be more for your target archers, I'm assuming. Uh, they have the new match bow strings. Uh, both Matthews and Hoyt came out with new, new string designs this year, new string, they just changed their string process and they're, they're saying that these are the best strings they've ever made. Uh, the new engaged, engaged limb legs is another pretty cool thing that Matthews came out with, but it only fits the 2024 bows. And it's like half the weight of the older style and they're pretty awesome. That's pretty much what Matthews is saying uh, that's new on these bows. I can tell you right now, the riser design is completely different. The limbs are different, the cameras are different. It is a completely different bow and I've been super impressed with them. So. Without further ado, let's shoot this thing and uh, let you hear it and see it for yourself. All right, so um, all my other bows that I've tested have been at 27 inches. I don't have the mods that I need to go to 27 inches on this bow, so this bow is set at 28. I'm trying to review this bow as best I can at 28 inches. I can already tell you that just based on the draw cycle, the shot, the shock, the silent, the quiet, I can review all that. I can't 100% tell you what it's gonna feel like at 27 inches as far as the valley and all that stuff goes um, because I don't have that option right now, but everything else I can give you an honest review on. So that draw cycle, it's the same. I mean, it's just so smooth. Let me let it down. Right there. So same as I said on the 29 and a half about the valley, this bow at 28 inches has a better valley than the boat than the 29 and a half does at 27. So I'm wondering if it has something to do with the allowing the cam to rotate more over at your higher draw lengths. I'm assuming that's what it is. Um, so let me draw this bow back again. Oh, so smooth. Now watch this, let it down. Let it down. That is so smooth, guys. I just can't even tell you how smooth that is. There's no drop off like there normally has been on the Matthews in the last couple of years. Guys, that is so smooth. It has just a little bit more hand shock than the uh, 29 and a half, in my opinion, ever so slightly. And I don't even know that it's really enough to justify talking about. Golly, that feels so good. Uh, I think it's so hard to tell back here, but I, I think the 29 and a half may just be ever so slightly quieter. 
It could also be the fact that I'm shooting this bow an inch longer, getting a little bit faster shot. There are several factors that could go into it, but I think tit for tat, same draw length, same arrow, same everything else. I think these things are so close that it's hard to, it's hard to knock this bow for being any louder. Man, that bow just draws and feels so good. Balances really well especially considering this bow is so long and it just balances right back out. Yeah, there definitely is just slightly a little bit more vibration in the shot than a 29 and a half. All right, last shot. I just can't get over how smooth that draw cycle is. So if you've seen the last couple Matthews reviews that I've done, when you see me draw it, there's no way I could let that bow down like that. Uh, it just, it, it get, comes down, comes down, bam, and just snatches your arm. And that's one of the gripes I've had in the past. It's been really hard to let these bows down. The way these bows shoot now, this bow, the draw cycle, I just can't talk about the draw cycle enough. I've been so impressed with this year's Matthews draw cycle. All right. So let's go ahead and add some scores to this board. All right, so for shootability, this is gonna be a heck of a shooting bow. Give it a nine. Tunability, I'll give it a five. Draw cycle, an eight. Vibration and noise, it was so close to the 29 and a half, I gotta give it a nine. I can't dock it because it was just that close. Speed, I'm gonna give it a nine. I'll tell you why here in a minute. Balance, an eight. Back wall, an eight. There's a little bit more give to the back wall than the shorter bow, which is to be expected. Um, weight, I give it an eight. Fit and finish, once again, I hate to do it, but Matthews, is, that bow just looks so good. You gotta give it a 10. And then price, giving it a five. This bow is gonna retail for 1,300 bucks. So let's talk about these numbers. Shootability, I gave it a nine. 33 inch axle to axle, six and a half inch brace height. The riser on these bows is just ridiculously long. Draw cycle, or I'm sorry, tunability, middle of the road. You gotta, sh you gotta shim it to tune it. You gotta twist your strings and cables to get your quarter inch adjustments in your um, draw lengths. Um, I, think I, I don't think I mentioned in my last video, this bow, or uh, both of these Matthews drew about a quarter inch long on the draw board. So, at 27 inches, I was 27 and a quarter, 28, I was 28 and a quarter, and so on and so forth. Um, so just keep that in mind. Draw cycle, phenomenal. It's, I think you can draw more weight on say the Hoyts, um, but the draw cycle to me seems smoother on the Matthews. I haven't said that in the past. And if you watch my old videos, you can verify that I have not said that about the Matthews, but this year's draw cycle is phenomenal. Noise and vibration, I give it a nine. It was so close to the 29 and a half, in my opinion, that I couldn't dock at any points. Um, slight vibration in the hand. I know as soon as you put a stabilizer on that thing, that vibration is gonna be gone. Um, the Hoyts, I can tell you, I tested them with the stabilizer on them because that's how they came in the box from the factory. You take that stabilizer off, it's a completely different story. So speed, I gave it a nine. Let's go ahead and talk about speed while we're talking while we're talking about the score I gave it. The reason I gave it a nine, this bow at 33 inch draw, uh, 33 inches axle to axle shot the same speeds as the 29 and a half at 30 inches. Now at 28 inches, it shot faster than the 29 and a half did at 27. That's to be expected. If you dock 10 feet a second, roughly, which is normally what you get to eight to 10 feet a second per inch of draw length. If I dock, say I dock eight feet a second, which is probably realistically about what I would get different. Uh, if you dock eight feet a second off of it, then you're looking at like 306, which is slightly slower. I got like 310 on the 29 and a half. But I gave this bow a nine because on speed, because at this long of a bow, Generally speaking, in the past, I've gotten a lot slower speeds than the 29 and a half inch model or 29 inch model. This year's bow shot on par with it. So 28 inch draw, 350 grain, 
425 grain and 513 grain arrow. I got 314, 289 at 425, and 263 at 513. With a 30 inch draw length, I got 334 with a 350, 306 at 425, and 280 at 513. So this bow is not a speed demon by any means, but it's on par with everything else. And it's very good, in my opinion, for uh, a 33 inch bow. I think it's like 10 or 15 feet a second faster than the Hoyts were, the, the longer Hoyts, I think. Uh, Actually, I think it was like 13 feet a second, if I remember correctly. But anyway, that's why I gave it a nine on speed. Balance, bow balance is great in my hand. Back wall, I gave this bow an eight. It had just a little slight bit of give, just ever so slightly over what the 29 and a half had. So I docked at one point there. Um, the valley did feel better at 28 inches. Um, and I, like I said, I think something with that valley has to do with um, the difference in draw length and just getting the full rotation, more of the rotation out of that cam. Uh, fit and finish, I gave the bow a 10. These bows just look so good. I mean, I know looks are opinionated, but this is a sweet looking bow, guys. And the finish on these bows is awesome. Um, I don't know, gave it a 10. Price, gave it a five because of uh, the $1,300 retail price tag. And then, Drum roll please, that winds up at a 79. So both the Matthews bows tied. With that being said, if you ask me which bow I was gonna shoot, I could tell you between the two, even though they scored together, they, they tied on score, I could tell you I would pick one over the other. I'm not gonna say that in this video, but there will be a video coming down the road of which bow I would pick between the two. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel out. I'm gonna be pulling a long night tonight bringing you all these videos for tomorrow, but I love doing it. So if you guys could, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the uh, content. Also, if there's anything else you wanna see, comment down below, please let me know. Just be cordial about it, just be nice about it. Try not to chew me out for whatever you see wrong on my video. I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be. I'm just trying to bring you some good, honest bow reviews. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I can shoot whichever bow I want. So just keep that in mind in the comments. Don't tell me I'm a Matthews fanboy or a Hoyt fanboy or whatever. I've shot both. Uh, I've shot Bowtex. I've shot PSEs. I've shot these bows. Right now, I currently shoot a Hoyt. So when you hear this review, it's coming from a guy that shoots a Hoyt. So. Don't call me a Matthews fanboy because I'm not. I just really like these bows and I think Matthews did an excellent job. So thanks for watching guys. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. Come check out these bows and we'll catch you on the next video.